starred in the great name of Allah, the most kind and merciful. All of my respectable viewers, Assalamu Alaikum. I am Asadullah Sheikh from Department of Electronics, Batch 19, and my role number is 43. And today, I am here to deliver a lecture, and my topic is Wireless Power Transmission. In this lecture, we will be covering three phases what, how, and why. So, let us begin with the phase one that is, what is wireless power transmission? Listening to the topic, I am pretty much sure most of you already have an idea of what my topic is all about. As the title says, it's about transferring electrical energy from one point to another without using wires at physical link. In today's world, we mostly witness wireless power transmission or WPT, the Wi-Fi. Mobile networking systems, televisions, and radio are all the common examples of wireless power transmission. It is made possible by converting electrical energy into radio waves. Now here a question arises, what are radio waves? A wave having a frequency ranging from 30 Hz to 300 GHz is said to be a radio wave. These waves have the tendency to carry power from one point to another. The idea of wireless power transmission was given and achieved in 1890s by Nikola Tesla. He is the father of electricity. He successfully lit a bulb without connecting wires at physical length using Tesla coils. He had a vision of a wireless world and a free source of electricity for everybody such that we people can use electricity for free but unfortunately this was never accomplished moving forward there are three types of wpt short range medium range and long range transmission there are different techniques to achieve these power transmissions as listed in the slides we will further discuss all of these techniques in our next phase, how it is achieved. So let's proceed. To transfer the electricity in short range, a technique called inductive coupling is used. It is actually transfer of energy by mutual inductance using primary and secondary coils. A very common example I can present to you all is the transformer. A transformer has a primary coil and a secondary coil inside it. The current is passed to primary coil which is greater in size and higher in number of turns due to which it induces electricity and an electric field is generated which leads to transfer of energy from primary coil to secondary coil at a very short distance such as 1 to 10 centimeters as demonstrated in the figure. Similarly, wireless charging paid and electric brush are some more examples of short range power transmission. Another type of WPT is medium range. There are two techniques by which power is transferred at a distance of 2 to 4 or 5 meters. The first one is known as resonant inductive coupling. It is very similar to what we have studied for short range power transmission, the only difference is of resonance. Resonance is a basic phenomena of amplification that occurs when a frequency of a system equals to that of a natural frequency. To make you understand of resonance, let me give you an in-house example. You guys must have noticed, sometimes when you are closing the door of your room, the windows or another door near to it starts shaking. Yes. That's the resonance. It happens because the frequency of these objects becomes equivalent. Now, if you look at the diagram, it's an electronic circuitry which shows that resonant circuits are used to equalize the frequency of two systems which enables to transfer energy. A company known as Vitracity works on this fundamental phenomena to construct smart houses. As you can see in the image, there is only one source which is transferring the energy using resonant inductive coupling and other house equipments are receiving the power at 
some distance. Another technique is called air ionization. It means to ionize the air to transfer the electricity. It's actually very hard to achieve practically because it requires an electric field of 2.11 megavolts per meter to be generated in order to transfer the electricity which is indeed very harmful. The possible example of air ionization is the natural lightning. Now comes the last time far field power transmission. This is the most interesting part of the lecture. The first technique by which we can transfer the energy from one point to another at a very far distance is known as microwave power transmission. It's not the microwave oven, don't think of that. It is actually transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. As you can see in the slides, microwave is a form of electromagnetic wave having wavelength from 1 mm to 1 meter. It requires huge antennas to transfer the energy as demonstrated in the figure. The important thing to note here is the transmission process. It is not possible to transfer alternating current directly using this technique. Initially at the transmitting antenna AC is converted into DC, DC is converted into microwave then it travels through the medium. It can be free space, vacuum or anything else. Now at the receiving antenna, microwave is converted back to DC and DC is again converted to AC to be utilized at the consumer's end. And the process cycle continues this way. Interesting, right? The next method to transfer electricity at larger distance is the one you guys are very familiar with. It is a laser power transmission. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. In this method, the energy is converted into laser beam transferred to the receiver end and it is converted back to electrical energy and utilized by the consumer. It's highly directional and requires free space to transfer the energy. It is also known as power beaming technology. A common example is a fiber internet connection that transverses through the sea from one country to another. At this moment, the most discussed technique to transfer energy at far distance is known as Solar Power Satellite SPS. It is a hot topic these days guys. Its objective is to convert solar energy into electrical energy being in space and transmit to a rectina on the earth using microwaves. Rectina will then convert the wave into low power energy and beam towards the desired receiving antennas. Once again, microwave will be converted back to the electrical energy to be used by the consumer as demonstrated in the figure. There is a solar satellite in the space transmitting the energy on the earth obtained from the sunlight. A huge rectina covering miles of land in the US is receiving the energy which will be further distributed to the receiving antennas and, and finally it will reach to the consumer to be utilized. A rectina is nothing but a rectifying antenna which can receive, transmit and convert the form of energy. So guys. Let's move towards our final phase that is why do we need all this? Starting with the advantages of WPT, it reduces or I can say eliminates the use of wires at physical link, thus no expense of copper or wire. It's efficient and easier to transfer power using WPT. By efficient, I mean there's less loss of power. In our current power transmission system, about 50 or 60% electricity is lost during the transmission due to the wires and high distances and the remaining will receive at the end. It is useful to power devices where connection of wires is usually hazardous or difficult. It can be transferred in any environmental conditions. It is one of the biggest advantage. We mostly see a power cut in a storm or heavy rainfall. WPT can help avoid it. Its maintenance cord is affordable. 
The transmission is harmless and helps connecting remote areas where till today electricity is not available but mobile signals are available. As we know, everything has its merits and demerits. So let's discuss the disadvantages of WPC. Its implementation cost will of course be higher. Some of its techniques offer transmission up to limited distance. When talking about the far field transmissions, the field strength and frequency range needs to be limited because the rays are radiative and harmful for living beings only if exceeded Federal Communications Commission FCC approved limits. Laser can get diffracted because it's highly directional. Microwave can face interference due to numerous waves being present in our atmosphere and it can cause fried bird effect, which means it's harmful for the birds. We have now discussed the three phases. So let's conclude our presentation along with listing some future applications of WPT. If implemented, WPT can lead us to a smart city or a shed, electrical vehicles, automated bus routes, vehicle charging roads, and in the critical situations like flood, WPT can help us build connection into remote areas and help using electronic drones, thus reducing the expense of fuel, fires, and saving of natural resources. Therefore, WPT makes communication convenient Electricity can be transferred worldwide, it's time-saving and automated, it helps to live our life in a smart and easier way. These are the references from where I have researched the whole stuff and that's it. Thank you very much for watching my lecture. This is Asadullah Sheikh signing off. Allah Hafiz.